Hey photographers, I'm throwing you a curveball today. This is not about photos or video, but about sound or audio. And if you're making videos, it's easy to get lost in the image details and take audio a little bit for granted. Now, my first TV job was audio engineer, setting up microphones and managing recording levels. So I've been working on my sound skills for a while. Now, let's start with your camera's built-in mic. This is the Panasonic GH4. And no matter how good the built-in mic is, its use is limited to recording the ambient sound that you might use for background. If you want to be serious about audio, you'll need one or more external microphones and maybe an external recorder. Now I've asked B&H to send over a few items so I could demonstrate. This is an overview to the kinds of solutions that are available. The products that I'm showing are the ones that I use and recommend. Links to prices and stuff are in the description below. Now, for reference today, we're recording video using the Panasonic EVA-1. And we've connected YouTube's Sony wireless receiver to the XLR input. I'm wearing a wireless transmitter, and I've placed the lapel mic here on my shirt. I'll explain all of that as we go. Audio for video generally falls into two categories, depending on whether your camera has a mic input, like the GH4, or not. If it does, there are two types, the small mini, sometimes micro connector, or the pro-style XLR connector, like the EVA-1. XLR connectors generally signify a higher quality mic. Pro equipment is always XLR. The XLR connector is more secure, and provides a ground connection, useful to eliminate hum on larger cable runs. Feel free to use extensions on XLR mics. But don't despair if your camera does not have an input. Great audio is still possible, and I'll get to that in a minute, and we might actually end up in just about the same place. Now, the small connector can be used to connect a wired or wireless microphone. If it's the even smaller micro connector, you might need an adapter. This is the Polson OLM-10 lapel mic. It has a long cable and it plugs into the microphone. It's battery powered with an on-off switch. Make sure you always have a backup battery. And this is the Sony ECM-44 with an XLR connector. It's the pro equivalent. It's also powered by an internal battery. Now there are lots more models to choose from, lots of brands, lots of price points. Lapel mics, also called LAVs, are generally unidirectional, so it doesn't matter which way they're pointed. I generally wear mine on my shirt and hide the cable inside. LAV is short for lavalier, French for pendant necklace. And in the previous millennium, before miniaturization, neck mics were big and had to be hung from a cord around the performer's neck. These days, they're small enough to hide under clothing, which is a good solution if you're shooting outside and it's windy, as long as the mic stays close to the sound source. But do be careful of clothing rustle and jewelry. These little foam covers are called wind socks. They're marginally useful. With wireless, the receiver mounts on the camera, and there's a transmitter that the performer wears. This is the Rodelink Filmmaker Kit. It's what I use. It's a less expensive alternative to YouTube's Sony system. Now the receiver can be fitted either with a mini or an XLR output cable. Either way, the mic is close to the speaker's mouth and it gives good isolation from the background. I've recorded in some pretty noisy places and still had good audio. Now, just to show you the versatility, Rode sells optional Invisalav stickers to place the mic on your skin so you don't need a clip. This is a technique that's used in the theater, typically at the hairline with flesh-colored tape. If you're going to use audio from the camera, I recommend that you set the level manually. These settings vary from camera to camera, and most consumer cameras have fewer audio features than the EVA-1. Now, we've selected input 1 and set it to mic. We've also selected input 1 on channel 2, 
so we record on both channels. Now when two mono channels are used, pros may record one lower than the other, just so that there will be an undistorted channel if things do get loud. Now both the transmitter and the receiver have batteries, so a wireless mic doesn't need power from the camera, but some wired mics do. We've turned the limiter off, we've set the level using the dials on the side of the camera. And we've turned the audio level display on to show the meter on screen. If your camera has an on-screen meter, use it when recording video, unless your scene is MOS, which stands for motor only shot, but the funny guy on the film set, he'll tell you that it means without sound. Yeah. For cameras that have manual control, unless there's also a setting to turn the limiter and or compressor off, you don't really have full control. What that means is that although the sound may not be distorted, it will sound compressed, which is nearly as unpleasant. And if it was quiet before you started speaking, once you start, the sound will start to automatically turn down until after a minute or two, it's reached the optimal level. So annoying. The solution is to make sure your levels are set low. That means the audio meter is always moving in the middle of the range, not near the top. If the meter has markings, you'll want to hit about minus 12 dB. It's way easier to turn a slightly low recording up than to wince through an overly compressed one. Although many cameras have a mic input jack, not all have a headphone connector for monitoring. And I find it very difficult to make sure I'm getting a good recording without one. Although I can be very confident in my gear and my settings, there's still a lot that can go wrong, particularly with wireless. So it's always good to have someone listening while you're recording. And even if you're recording solo, playing back the recording on the camera's internal speakers, which are even lower quality than the onboard mic, reveals nothing other than the existence of audio on a recording. If it's not too late, get a camera with a headphone jack. Now, my recommended cans, that's audio slang for headphones, are the Sony MDR7506. They have lots of street cred and a nice, clean, neutral sound. They're fairly durable, although if you use them a lot, you'll be replacing them once in a while. An alternate microphone option is a camera-mounted shotgun mic. Like Lav's, lots to choose from. The EVA-1 includes a mount for an optional shotgun mic like the MC700, and a shock mount to isolate it from the camera. We've connected it to input 2 and switched over to the MC200 for a minute. Shotgun mics are directional, isolating the sound coming from the side and behind, focusing on the subject that it's pointed at. An on-camera shotgun is useful for run and gun and for stand-ups in quiet settings like this one but not useful for interviews where the camera's directionality would need to be adjusted between two or more speakers. That generally requires an audio operator, like my first job, and a rig that looks something like this. This is the Rode NTG2 shotgun mic, which comes with a foam windsock mounted on the Rode boom pole with an Ore shock mount. Whew, heavy and tiring. That's a job for a younger individual, but of course, in a studio, you could mount it on a C-stand. Let's mount it on a C-stand and switch over to the NTG2. Now, generally, it's positioned just outside of the shot. And watch the shadow, made famous in the song, I'm being followed by a boom shadow. Now, this Rycote shotgun mount includes a super blimp. You'll need that outside to eliminate wind noise. And for even heavier winds, the Rycote kit includes this furry windsock. It fits over the blimp. Pros call these dead cats. Australians call them dead wombats. What awful names. Rycote provides a brush to keep it nicely groomed. Generally speaking, as you can likely tell, the sound from a shotgun on a boom is better than from a lav. They're higher quality microphones but you'll need a good operator, and getting good requires experience. Now, although it's the only choice if the camera doesn't have an audio input, an external recorder is a better solution even if your camera does have an input. 
if your reaction is, I'm not doing that, too much work, and I'll never get the audio and the video in sync, stick with me for a minute. I do this all the time. It's easy, and I'll demonstrate just how easy it is. This is the Tascam DR70D, a recorder which I like because it has four XLR inputs, supports both mic level and line level connections, very useful when connecting to a soundboard in a music venue, with settings to manage a variety of situations, connectors for headphone and output to a camera, as well as two ambience mics on the front. Now it has a tripod mount on the top and a tripod socket on the bottom, so it can be mounted between a camera and the tripod, although that solution is not as wobble-free as I'd like. Again, here's where an audio assistant is useful. To wear the mixer, this is a porta brace with a shoulder strap, so you can sling the Tascam over your shoulder. The assistant aims the mic, sets the level, and monitors the recording. Now, the 70D records internally on SD cards, four independent channels if you like, and has an audio out port to connect to the camera. But that's not always a feasible solution. Recordings made on the 70D are higher quality because it's capable of higher quality auto recording than the camera, with settings to select the sampling rate and the bit depth. And because the individual inputs can be recorded on their own channels, you can mix the sound while you're editing. One tip, it eats batteries like crazy, but supports USB power. Connect an external battery and you're good to go. Now, if you are recording video on camera and audio on the mixer, dual system recording to pros, you'll need to synchronize the video with the sound. I'm old enough to remember when that was not always a reliable process, particularly when quarter-inch audio tape recordings had to be transferred to magnetic film first. Digital made the recordings better with a more reliable time reference. Even so, easiest if you use a slate, clapper to us old school film types, at the beginning of a recording. It's also a great way to identify the recording of a scene or take quickly. This one was a gift when I shot at YouTube Studios in Paris. Now, if you don't have a slate, a hand clap will do. If you forget to do it at the start of a take, do it at the end. Pros call this an end or tail slate and turn it upside down. And even if you don't do any of those things, it's still simple to coordinate the two back together. I use Final Cut, but this is absolutely the same in any video editor. Import the video and audio files and put them on the same timeline. In the video file, mark the frame where the arm meets the slate. In the audio file, mark the point where the clap appears. It will be a single point in the waveform. Now, position the audio mark directly under the video mark, play to confirm. If, if you didn't, didn't get, get it quite, quite right, right, select, select the, the audio and plus, plus or minus one, one to get them perfectly aligned. Uh, do this a couple times and you'll realize that you don't even need the slate. Assuming that there's a guide audio track from the video, zoom in and line up the two waveforms. One more mic type, a handheld mic. These are useful for interviews. Even if you're wearing a lapel mic, a second mic, the handheld, captures audio from the guest. This is the Sportscaster's go-to, the Shure VP64AL. And that's where those multi-channel recordings can be super useful. Sportscasters also often wear broadcast headsets with a mic boom so they can hear the control room over all the stadium noise. That's one of many dozens of specialty mics that are available. You'll find a large selection at B&H, links below. Now, if there's something that needs more explanation, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to do a follow-up if you'd like more detail on any audio issue. I hope this helps. Enjoy your improved sound quality. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, shoot until your battery's empty and your card is full. And that's a wrap. Now this stuff plugged in.